I've never made a diorama before and I don't really know what I'm doing, but I made this scene from the Little Nightmares games. Let me show you how. The first step for making the diorama was to do some research. I went along and took lots of screenshots from different angles in the forest. Next up was to get started on the base. It is really hard to get hold of EVA or XPS foam in the UK, unless you order it online and then it becomes super expensive. <gasps> or maybe not. I am a noob in this community, so let me know down in the comments below if you know where you can source any locally for cheap in the UK. But anyways, I grabbed what I could find locally and that was this blue foam. I used hot glue to stick the foam together and then I put some tin foil on top of it to give it a bit more structure and texture. I then used Sculptor Mold for the base and I love working with Sculptor Mold for terrain because it creates a great natural rock effect. I was also hoping the tin foil would stop the Sculptor Mold from being absorbed too much into the foam which is why I focused on mainly covering the top as that is where I needed the surface to be the hardest. Now all we have to do is wait for this to harden overnight so it's ready for painting. 24 hours later I came back to check if it was dry but it wasn't. I came back a day later and it was still not dry. The next day it was still damp and the day after that too. How long is this going to take? Fast forward a few more days and it was finally ready to prime. Now the sculptor mold has finally dried, it's onto basing the cliff with Mod Podge mixed with black acrylic paint. I saw this tip over on Black Magic Crafts. Once dry, I then went in some greys, blues, greens and reds to make all the texture on the cliff show up more and give it a bit more dimension. The last step was to use a homemade oil wash to help create a more dark and muted tone. I then did a light grey brush to bring back the edge details. Next up was creating the tree, and I wanted to go for a really twisted dead tree rather than a bright green one, and the approach I found that would create this effect best was creating the base from copper wires. Luckily, I had this huge box of old and broken Cat5 cables lying around, so I thought I could strip them and then use the copper from them to save money. After stripping one, I realised this would take ages, but then I realised something else. I don't actually need to strip them because the wires are already bendy enough. Not stripping the cables fully also meant it was easier for me to sculpt as the wires are quite sharp on your hands. After I had the desired shape, I used hot glue to hold the wires in place. I then covered the hot glue in air dry clay. This was the cheapest clay in my local store and I liked that it was air dry so I didn't have to bake it in my oven. The air dry clay was super easy to mould so I added in some tree texture too using an old screw. I stuck the tree down with hot glue and then added more of the air dry clay and wire cutoffs from earlier to create a tree base and some exposed roots. I also carved out a little hole in the tree that will be sealed off later with a tiny door. I used pine cones to create fungi on the tree. This was another tip I saw over on Black Magic Craft, so make sure to check out his channel, I'll leave it down in the description. Next up was creating the bridge. To create the dilapidated bridge, I used lolly sticks and then cut them to size. To make them more like mini worn down wooden planks, I used a Dremel to make cuts and scratches. In hindsight, this would have probably been much easier to do before I cut up all the sticks. I then used a mix of Citadel contrast paints to age the wood and make it look more damp and decayed. I then assembled the bridge with some rope and glue. I really wanted to add a little tree stump ladder as seen in the game, so I grabbed some tin foil and started crafting the trunk. I covered this in tissue paper and PVA glue to create a paper mache. I opted for tissue paper over kitchen roll or newspaper as the texture would be better for what I'm looking for and it'd also make sure it's not leaving behind any roll patterns or indents. Once this was dry, I coated in the same black Mod Podge as earlier and then dry brushed on some browns to finish. To glue the tree to the base, I used hot glue and then a variety of different foliage to cover the glue lines and help it blend into the forest. I used leftover bits of wood from the bridge for the steps and hot glued these to the trunk. The next part was fun but messy. I got out my static grass applicator and began layering down all the grass I wanted. The static grass applicator makes a huge difference as it makes sure that all the grass is pointing upwards rather than lying flat. This gives it a much more realistic look. The Little Nightmares Forest has a lot of exposed rock, so I didn't want to coat the entire surface with one even layer of grass. I used different lengths and colours of grass to create this desired effect. The next step was to create the mini bear traps and this was one of my favourite parts of the build. I used a thin sheet of foam and some zigzag scissors to make the bases. I used a mixture of citadel paints to create a rust effect. Next up was the mini door. I had lots of fun making this tiny door that will go at the base of the tree. 
Next, I had to build a mini cage to hang it in the tree. I also decided at this stage to go back and use the same tissue paper and glue trick to add some more vines to the tree. So we are finally finished. But wait, where's Mono? The final step was to add our little friend Mono to the forest. I had Mono custom printed as I couldn't find the miniature online. And with that, the diorama is complete. Let's roll those final shots.